Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. In this video, I will show you how to solve this problem. You are given an array. You need to rotate this array k times to the left or right. For example, you have this array and you need to rotate this three times to the left. So your output should be this one. Remember that the core concept for array rotation is the same for both left rotation and right rotation. I will show you both implementations in this video. I will use pseudocode here to explain the whole solution. You can find C, Java and Python implementations of this pseudocode in my GitHub account. I have given the links in the description. Now we can solve this problem in four different ways. I have plans to cover all of these four algorithms, but that's not possible in one video. So I have decided to show you the worst and the best algorithm to solve this problem in this video. And in the future, I will cover the other two. Before I start explaining any of these two algorithms, I want to show you two, three lines of code that are common for both of these implementations and will help you to optimize your solution. In most exams, you will have a function like this to write your solution. Here, you can observe that in case of the C language, the parameter list of the rotate function contains three parameters. The first one is the array we need to rotate, the second one is the length of the array, and the third one is k. But in case of Java, we have only two parameters. The first one is again the array we need to rotate, and the second one is k. There is no length parameter present in the list, as we can get the length from the array itself in case of Java. So regardless of the language used, we will always require the array its length and k. So in our pseudocode, we will take a function with these three parameters. Now before you apply any algorithm, you should make sure that you need one. If the value of k is zero or a multiple of length of the array, you will not require any rotation. The output will be same as the input array. The same case applies when the array length is either 0 or 1, that is less than 2. So you can return from here if any of these cases occur as you would not require to modify the input array. If the value of k is greater than the length of the array, then you can optimize your code by dividing the array length by k and saving the remainder in the variable k. If you are fully following my solution, Make sure that you have these lines of code in your implementation as I haven't tested my solution without these lines of codes. Once again, if you want to check the implementations in C, Java or Python, then follow the links in the description. Now the first algorithm that will pop into your mind is the traditional one. We will first write some code to rotate this array a single time to the left and then execute this code a total of k times to get the final output. For example, we have this array and let's say the value of k is 3. So to left rotate this array 3 times using this algorithm, we will first write some code that can left rotate this array only a single time. Then we will execute this code a total of 3 times. So in the first iteration, the array will become this. After the second iteration, the array will become this and finally after the last iteration we will get our desired output so our first goal is to write a piece of code that will rotate the array to the left only a single time now for example when we rotate this array one time to the left the first element becomes the last element the second element becomes the first element the third element becomes the second element and so on we can easily implement this using two variables and a loop. You can use any loop here, but I recommend using a for loop as its syntax is concise. So the plan here is to swap two elements at a time for a total of n minus one times, where n is the length of the array. To do this, run a loop from index one to index n minus one and swap the elements at index i and i minus 1. During execution, in the first iteration, elements at index 0 and 1, that is the first and the second element, will swap their values. 
In the second iteration, the elements at index 1 and 2 will swap their values, and so on. After the last iteration, the first element will reach the last position in the array and one left rotation will complete. Now we have a piece of code that left rotates an array only a single time. So to left rotate it k times, we just need to run this code for a total of k times. This can be easily done by putting this piece of code inside a new loop that runs k times. This algorithm is for left rotation. To do a right rotation, just change the direction of the inner loop. Instead of starting from 1, start from n-1 and end at 1. So now the inner loop rotates the array to the right for a single time and the outer loop right rotates the array k times. So in this way you can solve this problem but your code will take a lot of time to complete execution for higher values of both n and k. The inner loop always runs n times so the time complexity of the inner loop is O of n and we are running this O n operation for k times so the overall time complexity of this code is O of n k which is pretty bad. In terms of space complexity this program is excellent as it uses O1 extra space or you can say constant space. So we need an algorithm that can solve this problem using O1 extra space as well as time complexity less than O of n k. For this particular problem, you cannot find an algorithm that will take less than O n time as you have to move all the elements of the array at least once to rotate it and this will take O n time to complete. Now the best way to solve this problem in O n time is by reversing the array three times. No, we are not going to reverse the entire array three times. Instead. We will first reverse the first k elements of the array, then the last n minus k elements, and finally the entire array. All this reversing needs to be done separately. I will show you the time complexity calculation after completing this implementation. As we need the array reverse algorithm three times, let's make a separate function for that. As you can guess here, we will do in place reversing because if we create another array that will change the space complexity to O of n from O of 1 and we don't want to do that. So we will modify the given array and that's why we do not need to return anything from this function. So you should use the void return type for this function. The parameter list should contain three arguments. The first one is the array we want to reverse. The other two are the starting and the ending index of the range within which the reversing needs to be done. Now the easiest way to reverse a portion of an array is as follows. First, swap the values at the start index and end index, then increase the start index by 1 and decrease the end index by 1. Repeat this till the start index is less than the end index. Now that we have a reverse function, we can call it from the rotate function to reverse the first k elements of the array. Again call it to reverse the last n minus k elements of the array. And finally reverse the entire array for once. That's it. We will get the k times left rotated array after this step. So we should stop here. If you want to right rotate the array k times, then you need to reverse the entire array first, then reverse the first k elements and finally reverse the last n minus k elements. After this step, you will get the required output. Now let's roughly calculate the time complexity of this code. We first need to know the time complexity of this reverse function. As this function only contains a single loop, the time complexity will depend on the number of iterations this loop performs. This loop always performs n by 2 iterations where n is the number of elements that we need to reverse. So in the first call, roughly it will complete k by 2 iterations. In the second call, it will complete n minus k divided by 2 iterations. So combinedly, this two function calls will complete n by 2 iterations. And the last function call to reverse the entire array 
will complete another n by 2 iterations as the length of the array is n. So the whole program will take o n time to complete. You can find the links to C, Java and Python implementations for both of these algorithms in the description. That's it for this video. See you in the next one.